Good morning, church. Welcome out to MOTD. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, doors, and doors come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, we have them all around our world. Uh, wooden doors, plastic doors, sliding doors, high security voltage doors. There are also many important doors uh, in the country. Doors such as Number 10 Downing Street or uh, Buckingham Palace. In the New Testament, Jesus describes himself in many different ways. Each description reveals something about his character or exposes it and expands a truth about him that we can understand and apply to our lives. And in John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus says this, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and go out and find pasture. And I want to take just a few moments this morning to expose this scripture and make some application. What does it mean that Jesus is the door? Clearly the most important door of all of life. But what does it mean for you? First thing is that Jesus being the door means exclusiveness. The message of salvation, as we all know, is completely inclusive. Uh, 2 Peter 3 verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's an incredible scripture because it says anyone who desires salvation can find it. God is no respecter of persons. He died for all the world. However, the way to salvation is completely exclusive. There aren't many doors to get to uh, uh, heaven or to get through to salvation there is one door. Have you ever tried to find someone's house? You've put in the postcode or the sat-nav uh, and uh, you're driving down the road and you think, where's the number? Where are they? You're looking at all the different numbers. You stop, you knock on a door, it's the wrong door, and eventually you find the person. Why don't you just walk into any door on the street? Because your friend is not behind any door. He's behind one specific door. And that's what salvation is. God is all inclusive that anyone can be saved, but all exclusive of how to be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The second application is access. You know, I took my son to Cadbury's World a few years ago and uh, we brought tickets. As we got the tickets, we showed them. And when we went through, they gave us access. We walked into the chocolate factory. You see, when you know Jesus, you have access. The Bible says that you have access to a personal relationship with God. Verse 4 says, the sheep will hear my voice. What that means is that we often say the phrase, I don't have religion, I have relationship. And that's what a true relationship with God is. It's a personal uh, uh, relationship where you can speak to God, you can be directed by God and be led by God and know Him. You also, because of access, have access to the presence of God. Hebrews 10 verse 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter His holiness by the blood of Christ. You know, how many people would love to spend a night or have a dinner with uh, the Queen or the Prime Minister or perhaps your favorite, uh, you know, your, your, your greatest role model? Well, how about being a Christian? You have access to the very presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, your Savior. And also you have access to the power of God. You know, it is true that the gospel should be accompanied by signs and wonders. God didn't make you, uh, you didn't become a, re uh, a Christian to become religious and powerless. Christianity is about power. You have power because of the Spirit of God that's in you, because of access, you have the ability to that power. So access gives you uh, the personal relationship with God, a present, the presence of God, and also you have access to the power of God. The third thing and the final thing about the door of being Christ is you have provision. You know, when people are in need, it's very natural that we trust in ourselves. We panic, we fear, we, we, we worry, and we're anxious. But the Bible says that the Christian's provision comes 
when you enter through the door of Christ. It reminds me of my nonna's house. We would go into my nan's house and as the Italian culture is, uh, uh, you know, you, you would be flooded with food, with options, with this is what I've had, got for you. Why don't you try this? Do you want more? Are you hungry? Uh, it, as soon as you walk into the door, trust me, you're never going to run out of provisions. See, Jesus is able to sustain you and look after every one of your needs. I am the door, verse 9. If anyone enters me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. David found this out. Psalms uh, 23, verse 1 to 2. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Walk through the door of Jesus. You have exclusive salvation. You have access and you have provision. God bless. See you again.